It's now August the 8th, a long, long time after the accident, and I'm back here on YouTube again. Uh, a number of things have happened in the last week or two that are worthy of note uh, to bring you guys up to speed on the latest uh, investigation and discoveries with regard to the crash. The first thing that's brought me here today is that the insurance company has uh, paid the full cost of the aircraft. That is a financial closure, of course. The reason they've done that is that the aircraft crashed due to mechanical failure. The cause of that is the work that was done in modification. Um, most of the details around that is uh, shown in earlier videos. The second reason to be here is that as part of the investigation, the insurance company hired a forensic team to do a thorough investigation of the aircraft. They found the same issues that the NTSB and FAA found. They also found some additional issues um, and concluded that um, the aircraft exhibited multiple serious uh, issues. Uh, I won't go into the details here. We'll wait for the NTSB report to come out. That seems to be the one report that most people are waiting for in order to be definitive. I now have two reports that say the same, they're both independent of each other, uh, that showed the cause of the crash, and it was mechanical failure. The other reason for being here is that statements have been made by Viking in their video on YouTube that really do need to be rebutted. Um, some are very offensive, um, and I want to go through a few of those. The first is that the aircraft was sold by them as a favor to the prior owner that was a disabled individual uh, and uh, required their help, which they were happy to give. That actually is absolutely not true. They manipulated the previous owner uh, into giving him no choice but to pay them $10,000 for the sale of the aircraft and when it was shipped to them rather than stick to that agreement they charged him another $1,000 bringing the total up to 11000 and that extra thousand was for earnest money with no definition as to what that meant. Um, the previous owner felt like he was held ransom uh, by Viking and had no option and no choices and of course both he and I uh, are left with a bad taste in our mouth. The second comment by Viking uh, in their video is related to their experience with me and how difficult I was and how I became uh, quite ugly with them during the sales process. I think I've covered the reasons for that before but since I've just seen their video I wanted to comment here too, and I did become ugly with them because a number of things, uh, dirty tricks as you could call them, were pulled uh, by Viking during the sales process. The first was that I drove for nine hours down to Florida uh, to go see the aircraft and to fly it and discuss it and inspect it, and at no time did they mention to me that the wings were not on the aircraft. So when I got there and found the aircraft was disassembled and I was unable to fly it, unable to start it, um, the flight controls had not yet been converted back to standard, they were still disabled controls. That was a huge disappointment. But the difficulty in the relationship with them came much later in the process when they um, Firstly, wanted to charge me for delivery, even though delivery was included in the sale, the sales contract. Um, and then twice refused to release the aircraft to me after I had made full payment for it because of what they referred to as upgrades. The first upgrade was for the gearbox and the second upgrade was to the cooling system. Both turn out after the accident to have been absolutely essential uh, and while part of it was known to me at the time most of it was not and the gearbox and engine were both uh, fairly severely overheating 
you can actually see it on one of Jan's videos that he shot, um, showing both gearbox temperature and coolant temperature uh, way above normal. Um, the failure to release the plane to me unless I did these upgrades is what got me quite testy. He charged me, of course, another thousand dollars for the gearbox and another thousand dollars for the coolant uh, system upgrade. The reason those two things are so important now, after the fact, is that they were the primary cause of the massive weight and balance inaccuracies. Uh, and issues that we had during the flight. No, neither of those two things are related to the flight controls locking up. That's been covered in previous videos. But the addition of the upgraded gearbox, the increased size of the radiator, the increased amount of coolant created a substantially nose-heavy condition. And it was for that reason and that reason alone that Jan added the three four-pound shop bags uh, into the tail of the aircraft. On his video, he said that it was for my benefit to improve my flight experience, when in reality that extra 12 pounds was added to offset the addition of at least 20 pounds uh, at the nose of the aircraft. So collectively, the aircraft's total weight was substantially changed from the weight and balance that was issued. In the report, um, that the insurance company um, prepared, quite a few other things have been discovered. Now, it's worth remembering that I've not seen the aircraft since the day of the crash and has have, and have relied on FAA, NTSB, the insurance company and the examiners uh, for all of the physical evidence, photographs, videos, etc. So this is not me telling you what I've found. This is what those bodies of folks uh, have found. Uh, one of the big concerns that some people have is the fraud um, that Viking is, re is responsible for um, with their sign off in the logbook uh, where Jan performed a condition assessment, certified the aircraft was safe and flight worthy and signed it uh, in the logbook according to a particular section of the FAR. Um, the examiners have determined that that was in fact a fraudulent entry uh, because the inspection was not done according to those uh, that inspection requirement. The specifics of course are easily discovered by, by all of you and I don't need to cover here um, uh, in detail. The reason that that inspection was so important is that I think if it had been performed, which it hadn't, uh, as evidenced by the inspector finding that all of the inspection covers were still covered with vinyl wrap and not one of the inspection covers had been removed, which is required as part of that inspection. Um, the charge to me of $600 for that inspection uh, doesn't matter. Sure, yes, that is also fraud. Uh, to charge somebody for work that has not been done. Uh, very bad practice, but the 600 bucks doesn't bother me. What bothers me is that the inspection was signed off according to um, the, uh, the FAA rules. The work was not done. Um, and the license uh, against which that, uh, that sign off was performed is of course in, in jeopardy uh, because of it. One of the other things covered in Jan's video um, are some excerpts from videos and audio recordings made at the time of the crash. Uh, you all may know that it is not legal to record somebody without their knowledge. It's also even more not legal, if that makes sense, to then publish those video and audio recordings. I don't have a problem with that because there was nothing that we said that was um, a problem. Um, but there are two things that Jan has done that are a real problem. Uh, one is that he has edited those videos to the point where he has excluded vital information that was said or seen immediately before or after the quote that he provided. Uh, one of the worst parts is the video um, of the takeoff showing a beautiful smooth nice takeoff with his commentary 
being that it showed the point in time where the flight controls first exhibited a problem. The video does not show that. The video starts after we had the issue on, a med uh, on, on the, the start of the climb out and ends just before we turned on course. Yet it's commented uh, in the audio that that video shows um, that perfect departure, uh, which of course it doesn't. Uh, the second issue is that the videos were, um, were taken without my friend's permission, and he has been quoted to say things that he has not said, and, and that information will come out later. The most important thing is that my friend and I did discuss prior to those videos being shot that we would not comment on anything with regard to the mechanical failure of the aircraft in the course of the crash, but we did comment on why we came back to Massey compared to going to another airport. Now, I've commented on that being simply the choice between two evils, the choice between trying to make it to a new airport further away or run the risk of making further turns to get back to an airport that we knew where it was with the complete, complete failure of the instrumentation, again as covered in the previous video. My friend has been quoted um, as saying that I lacked flight experience, that I turned back and we came back to Massey simply because of the lack of, of uh, situation awareness and location which is not true. Let me show you a few things that I've mentioned quickly in the preamble. Uh, this is a section of the report done by JL2 Aviation Consultants for the insurance company. Um, and here you'll see the images of the shot bags um, that would cause such a, an issue with weight and balance. Uh, you can see here that they're not restrained they're just laying around. Uh, Jan had commented in his video that he had glued them to the surface and nowhere on any of these bags is any glue residue. There was no attempt um, to restrain them in any form or fashion. So two were found in the very last tail section. Uh, sorry, one was found in the very last tail section. Two were found in the next section further down the fuselage and these bags had migrated substantially uh, during the flight. The reference I made earlier to uh, the inspections, um, Jan signed off according to CFR 43.13 Appendix D, and if that inspection had been done, then many issues with the flight, with the aircraft flight controls, would have been discovered and would have to have been fixed prior to the sale and initial flight. Here's the text message from the previous owner where we're discussing um, how he felt like he had been held over a barrel and if he didn't accept the payment to Viking then he would have to move the aircraft to another shop and since he was in North Carolina and as a disabled individual he didn't have the options that many of us have that might have made that more acceptable. You can see here that the total cost that was charged to him was $11,000 and it was in the form of two payments, a $10,000 and then an additional $1,000 earnest money. Here's an interesting um, piece of information that was in the initial package but I have not paid a lot of attention to it until later. Um, this is the Carfax report for the donor car that provided the engine. And you'll notice that the donor mileage is 14,000, just over 14,000 uh, miles. And on Viking's website, they say in multiple places and make a big deal of the fact that their engines never exceed 5,000. Uh, and in some cases are substantially less. So it quite surprised me to discover um, that this particular engine had been in a totaled car, um, a Honda Fit, and had done over 14,000 hours prior to it being a new, fresh install uh, in my aircraft.
This is uh, a copy of the publication of a statement made by Viking um, on the day of the crash, on September the 14th, uh, where um, Alyssa decides to blame the crash without knowledge or without any investigation or discussion on pilot error. Um, she also in this statement refers to the aircraft as being perfect which it clearly wasn't when it left their facility. The reason that I've shown this, it's obviously available online, is that Jan in his video initially states that he had just returned from Texas uh, and was compelled to shoot a video and put a video online because he's been too busy and was tied up and, and uh, etc. Yet these statements were made and were being made whilst the NTSB and FAA were outside uh, investigating the aircraft. So clearly misinformation and deliberate um, falsifications have been made um, during the process. Here is the section of the final report um, that says that uh, Each wing was inspected on both sides and it was noted that all of the inspection panels on the bottom of both wings had not been opened or inspected since the wrap had, had been applied. That wrap of course was applied um, years ago. Uh, according to the airplane's last condition inspection signed off the day before the accident, mechanic Ian Egenfellner uh, stated he performed the inspection in accordance with 14 CFR Part 43, Appendix D, which does not apply to experimental aircraft. Um, however, had the uh, mechanic actually performed 14 CFR 43.13, Appendix D, um, as he had stated in his description of the work, the wrap would have been cut around the inspection panels and their respective hardware so that inside the wings uh, could have been inspected and there's various photographs of every single uh, inspection panel um, still with the wrap intact uh, and no uh, removal. This section refers to the throttle. Upper portion of the engine counter was, remo was removed. Um, the throttle control and associated cable was found to be extremely stiff to move. An examination of the throttle body arm indicated that it was mechanically bent and stopping the control cable from making full travel. The control rod arm was making contact with the fabricated idle stop bracket and rubbing during all phases of power application. The rubbing of the control cable and its corresponding marks indicate that it had been making contact prior to the accident. And here are the same photographs I've published in prior um, video. Here is Ian's sign off. I certify that this aircraft has been inspected on 09.13.21 with total hours of 45 in accordance with the scope and detail of 14 CFR Port 40, Part 43, Appendix D, and was found to be in a condition for safe operation. So, this is Ian using his ANP license to officially sign off in the logbook that he had conducted the inspections according with that particular section and that the aircraft was safe. Um, clearly we've shown that the inspection was not performed. It's very easy to determine that it was not performed. Uh, one, I think, most visual indication is that all of the inspection covers were still covered by wrap and each and all of them are to be removed to allow for uh, inspection of internal parts, cables, etc. 
This is a section of the report that talks about uh, work that was done in the prior accident, uh, which was around April of, uh, of 2020. Um, this section is a, uh, is a sign off by Neil Stewart. Um, and it talks of the um, work done by Whirlpool, Whirlpool that repaired the propeller and work done by Viking um, to repair the gearbox. Right, so this is important because of two things. One is that Viking had uh, told me that they had no knowledge of this aircraft, no knowledge of a prior um, accident. Yet the photographs that I received after my crash of the prior crash showed substantial airframe damage and uh, Jan confirmed that he did in fact rebuild the gear gearbox. At the time of sale, he claimed to have absolutely no knowledge of any issues having happened with this aircraft. Uh, and clearly he did because he had repaired the gearbox uh, from that same crash. The other point that's important here is that the gearbox and propeller were installed with a total hops time of 1.5 hours. Yet on August the 4th, 2019, which is some seven months earlier, the total time was in fact 12.8 hours. On September the 11th, 2021, the hours were then recorded to be 43 hours. But just two days later, while the aircraft was in maintenance for its condition inspection, the aircraft gained another two hours of flight time without any actual flying being performed. So there is a appalling discrepancy between hours um, that is very confusing. Um, and this person that prepared this report spent quite some time discovering um, some scary discrepancies and lack of information in the logbook. Don't forget this logbook um, does not contain and has never contained any information with regard to the prior crash and has not had listed in it any of the work done by Yan uh, in the modification of the flight controls um, uh, and the gearbox and uh, cooling system um, upgrade. Wings were removed, wings were remounted, flight controls were altered, and there's no record of any of it um, in the logbook, which is a little spooky uh, to say the least. It's been quite a surprise to me, the things that I've discovered. Um, and one of the main drivers for this video is that I've been reached out to by a large number of people that feel like Viking has done them harm over the years. Uh, they've attempted to bring it to the public's notice. They've been beaten down by uh, appalling social media activity. And I don't uh, respond to that kind of bullying um, and will continue to publish information and judge people's interest in it by the thousands of people that have reviewed the video uh, and commented. One thing that I didn't know at the time of the acquisition was that Viking had in fact declared bankruptcy a number of years ago because similar issues had occurred and to avoid the lawsuits that were filed and the financial penalties associated, uh, they in fact filed bankruptcy and left a number of people uh, in the lurch. Uh, four of those people have reached out to me um, and praised me for having the courage in their mind for being so specific and asking me to continue because the marketplace needs to hear this information when they're making decisions. You, you may not believe it all, that's not the point. The point is, is that you see the positive material and you also need to see stories such as this in order to make uh, a true judgment. If I had seen any information such as this, I would not have purchased this particular aircraft and I would not have done business uh, with Viking. Um, I unfortunately did not see uh, or get access to any of this kind of material prior to my uh, experience with them. I'll be producing one more video when the NTSB report comes out and I will show uh, excerpts from that report 
along with uh, other reports like the one that's on screen here. Because it's important, I think, for people to see very clearly just how dangerous the work is that's been done and how people's lives um, are, are, are at risk. Um, Jan and Viking, in my opinion, showed depraved indifference to the lives of pilots um, to do shoddy work, to cause aircraft to crash, to cover it up, um, to try and distract the investigators and the insurance company, etc., from the truth by publishing uh, dubious information is all reprehensible. Here's the final conclusion section of the second report. It is identical to the first that was done a few months ago. Um, missing nut and cotter pin holding the elevator control rod to the lower yoke control arm, allowing the bolt head to make contact with the right side of the center box uh, between the seats. It says here during departure, but uh, obviously that can happen at any time. It's not only during departure. 12 pounds of loose weight moving around in the empennage section of the aircraft, unrestrained uh, weight bags, uh, tension of the elevator control cables was too low, was too slack. Throttle cable rubbing on the idle stop plate, making the throttle uh, extremely stiff. And then the last uh, item here is uh, the lack of updated weight and balance and flight tests for the newly installed gearbox. It says here overflow tank and ballast, but I think the inspector was unaware that the radiator had been increased in size and more fluid. Uh, I think that's just a detail that he had not asked about. Uh, lack of the new weight and balance negates the original one providing provided to the FAA during the aircraft certification process uh, for experimental airworthiness. Uh, his point um, elsewhere in the written section of the report was that when substantial changes are made to the aircraft, which of course includes remounting of the wings, conversion of flight controls from disabled to standard, plus of course the installation of a new gearbox and cooling system, all would be classified as major maintenance uh, and or modification, and the aircraft needs to be returned to 40 hours of testing, and new airworthiness certificate, etc. So he was very concerned about that and the aircraft should never have been sold uh, under that condition. Uh, unfortunately, all of these things uh, were not known to me at the time. Yes, I've known them for a few months since the initial discoveries after the crash. Um, but this is the final report and it is identical to the, uh, the first one that was received a few months back.